This program is brought to you by Guiding Light Assembly. You know when Deacon Tupa came up to share the word God gave her, my mind went to the trials of Nigeria. And God is able to do the impossible. He is able to break the unbreakable. The Lord will surely do it. He will surely do it in the name of Jesus. This morning I've titled my message, Servants and Horses. Servants and Horses. And I guess you know where I'm going. Servants and Horses. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 7, Ecclesiastes 10 verse 7, the Bible says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants on the earth. I have seen servants on horses and princes walking as servants on the earth. Now that is not the situation that you should have. You should have the princes on the horses and the servants walking. Amen? And it will become apparent to you in a moment that I'm not talking about servants from the way that most people uh, see servants or, or about princes the way most people see princes. Servants, servants, as symbolized by this scripture, are people who are bereft of values. People who are bereft of values lack conscience are self-serving it's quite a lot you know and servants are the helm of affairs in our nation let's just be clear about that are self-serving servants symbolize people who lack basic competence lack understanding are ill-equipped for the job they are thieves and have no qualms about stealing the commonwealth lying and cheating is second nature to them servants have no sense of ownership you have to own a problem if you're going to solve it but I, what I see in, 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 in our nation is people blaming the government that came before blaming others blaming somebody for for problems that they need to own and to solve the princes symbolize people who have been trained and equipped who share the values that build nations who have learnt self-control and discipline who have wisdom who are mature and capable and mature and capable and place the common good before their own personal interests these are people that are apt to work for the greater good and they hold to the truth and to the fear of God servants and princes and you know the princes or the servants didn't get onto the horse by default what happened is the princes abdicated their responsibility to ride the horse the princes are meant to be the riders the people that have the know-how the knowledge the skills and all the requisite qualities for leading nations let me take you to another scripture in ecclesiastes, ecclesiastes chapter 10 this one is in verse 16 and i continue to verse 17 ecclesiastes 10 16 and 17. woe to the land when thy king is a child and thy princes eat in the morning blessed art thou o land 
when thy king is the son of nobles and thy princes eat in due season that's called delayed gratification when thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness see God designed the church so that each of us not not pastors I mean we got it wrong pastors are running for office that that was never God's plan there's nothing wrong with the pastor running for political office but God didn't the pastors are responsible to equip and prepare the people to run for office amen and so we got it wrong God says when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice the righteous need to find their way into positions of authority the righteous left the righteous left office I, I, I know my father is on, of the generation that um, had to go abroad for an education in the late 40s and he came back in the early 50s in those days everybody had to go abroad and in those days it was coco from the well managed resources of the western region that funded most people in their education how many people does government fund today and he came back I won't name them with other people that read law like him but they came back to Nigeria and went into politics they went into politics and the problem was they found politics was too dirty so they left the result was when you create a vacuum or nature abhors, abhors a vacuum it will be filled gradually we left the space I want to say something it's not very wise but how many people have been to Alausa lately who do you find there I won't say anymore because if I say they're all servants there I'm going to expect a delegation tomorrow but we've abdicated our responsibility in every area of governance in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12 God says and they shall be of thee they shall be of thee those shall be from amongst you in the congregation that shall build the old waste places that shall raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in my point today is we are responsible we cannot pass the blame to others it's the politicians it's the leadership where did the leadership come from how did they get there we could have maintained control of everything before things got to this bad God will see us through amen God will see us through but get ready to tighten your belt a little more amen now now I, I just want to share five things five things that we must do to recover our position as princes and to dethrone the servants and I am not speaking from an obedient perspective I will not dabble into partisan politics but I know I will get I have my PVC and I know that I will vote for one of the candidates I'm not going to tell you who amen but I also know that you are also wise and seeing and so you two know who to vote for 
Amen. Five things. Five things. The first. It is futile to change the outside when the inside is unchanged. And this is what we get in church. We get a lot of people who know how to present on the outside, but when what they present on the outside is not reflected on the inside, we're going to have a problem. It's futile to present an outside that is not representative of what is inside you. Nothing changes till we change. So we will continue to have the princes walking on the earth and the servants riding the horses until we change. And our change is not going to come from anything we see or hear. It's going to come by the Spirit of God from God. So that's the first point. Nothing changes till we change and it is futile to change the outside if the inside is not affected. The second point, sustainable change comes from the root, not the fruit. We want to present a beautiful fruit, but the fruit cannot be beautiful unless the root, the root di dictates how the fruit will grow. Sustainable change comes from the root. We must be rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. That is it in a nutshell, rooted and grounded in Christ. Because when we are, we can face situations, we can face challenges with our head up because we know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. We know that even though we go through a fiery trial now, we will come out of it. Rooted, grounded in Christ. There's no point talking the talk if you're not walking the walk. Another point on this same subject. As I clean the inside of the cup, the outside becomes cleaner. If you're washing the inside, the outside will get cleaner. But cleaning the outside of the cup hardly affects the inside of the cup. We need to be purified by the washing of water of the word. And you know, if the only time you open your Bible is on Sunday when you come to church, I'm sorry, you cannot grow as a child of God. We need to spend time purifying our attitudes, purifying our character, purifying all these things. That's what qualifies us to ride as princes. Amen. Here's another one that should inform the way we pray. God is more interested in changing me than he is in changing my circumstances. God is more interested in changing me. My circumstances will change when he changes me. And so if you just took a cross-section of people's prayers, if, 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 um, if we were able to hear what people are praying out about, we would find that most people are praying about a change in circumstances. Not a change in themselves. And I, I think we need to look at ourselves. We need to reflect. You know, the other Sunday I was talking about the way some of us in church, in this church, treat our domestic staff. They're human. And I said that there's not one person that God created that is better than another. 
nobody is better than the next person. You may be richer, you may be more educated, you may be all those things, but you're not better. So don't treat them as if they're subhumans. Amen. So God is more interested in changing my circumstances, or changing me, than in changing my circumstances. Why are you looking like that? Amen. And then nothing, nothing can replace personal responsibility. Nothing can replace personal responsibility. Nobody can do my praying for me. Nobody can do my studying the Bible for me. Nobody can do my fasting for me. Nobody can do my giving for me. I must take personal responsibility for my life. That's the way to engage the Holy Spirit, taking personal responsibility. Amen? It's time. It's time we got back onto the horses. A horse is, a, is an instrument that demonstrates power. So when you have cars, they say it's so much horsepower because it's power. We need to take power. We need to take power back. And it's going to have to be through the spiritual route and not through the natural route. I'll, I'll tell you, just, I'll just share something. I've been praying with some people. Daniel, who was a righteous man by all standards, Daniel started a prayer in Daniel chapter 9. And he prayed to God. He said, we have sinned. He took responsibility. Even though you might not find his personal sin involved, but he took responsibility and said, we, are pe the people, have sinned before you. And he listed all the things they had done. And he now began to ask God for an intervention. And when the intervention came, this is what Angel Gabriel said in Daniel 9, 22. He said, I have come to give you skill and understanding. Notice that Nigeria is full of men of understanding, of analysts. They can analyze the political situation and tell you who's going to win the election. They can analyze all sorts of things. That's not the analysis we want. Daniel understood that God would give understanding. The things that you see are not necessarily the way they are. And so he said, Lord, give us understanding. The skill to analyze from your perspective. The understanding to know what is happening in this time. And so that should inform the way we pray. Instead of depending, I, I mean, I, I, watch Arise, watch uh, all those programs. And there's no shortage of analysts. And they're all very well read people and they speak well. Sorry, that's not the analysis we want. We want an analysis that comes from heaven. And we're going to get it. Once we are determined to turn this country around, this country has myriad problems. I was talking to somebody in the airline industry. And he said, Pastor, the government is only saying they release money to the airlines. They haven't seen a cobble yet. Why won't tickets get so expensive? It's getting so that traveling abroad is going to be very restricted to people who have lots of money. That's the way it's going. Because no airline is going to operate where they cannot pay their operational costs. I can't blame them for, for deciding they're suspending their, their, their travel here because they're not getting paid. They're not getting their money out. But who are the people that are getting their money out? They are the people that are ready to pay under the table, to pay a premium for, for money. The problems are many, so I just better not go into them. 
Okay. We say we're producing 60% of our oil capacity. But it's getting stolen. I, I can't tell my friends abroad that the lion's share of our oil production is stolen. They can't even fathom it. They can't comprehend. How can that happen? It's like you, 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 you have a factory that is producing canned tomatoes. And it's producing the tomatoes, they're going into cans, and as you watch them going into cans, where they're supposed to put them into cartons, there's no cans. They've disappeared. Who stole them? It's possible to find out. You just have to go down the value chain. But, but that's what's happening. A whole vessel with three million barrels of crude oil comes into the nation, can't load overnight. It takes weeks to load such a vessel and can collect our oil, our commonwealth, and go abroad. And of course, NMPC Limited, Abby, most of the staff come from a particular, most of the senior staff come from a particular tribe in Nigeria. I don't need to tell you which tribe. But that's the situation we're in. We've allowed the servants to ride the horses. And we need to get back onto the horses now. Amen. And our getting back is going to depend on our walk with God. It's not going to happen by accident. As we walk, God, you see, God delights in, in showing us the way. He will speak to us. He will show us. If you're in the right place, if you're ready for your a heart change, not an external change. You know, we can, we can praise God in church, but how much of that praise comes from the inside and how much of it is external? These are the things. And I can't look at you and know. Only God looks at you and knows whether it's his heartfelt praise or real praise. Of course, I can know if God shows me. Amen.